yet of course in fact today the evidence has come there no taliban also there in iraq and yet what he did was bombarded war war against iraq large number of innocent people died the number of number lost to terrorist atrocities in new york of the on the world trade center coming down is less than a tenth of the toll in iraq that kind of killing if there is anyone who can be called a terrorist i said this in an earlier occasion and i repeat again if there is anyone who can be called a terrorist it should be george w bush <laughs> he has declared a war and it is not a war according to law it is an unjust war and not according to the international law and everyone has a right to protest against that war if anyone could protest anyone could condemn that kind of war be a hindu christian muslim fundamentalist or otherwise you have a right to protest just because we protest and condemn we can be considered as terrorists one of the most difficult problems is to define terrorism see we talk of terrorism 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 where is the definition of terrorism how do you define terrorism tada did not define terrorism porta did not define terrorism only terrorist acts were defined and those acts could be even under the indian penal code they are not different murder killing decoity choosing guns all are under the ordinary law but you can the, at the discretion of the police they can use it as an act of terrorism under tada law if it could be broadly agreed that the deliberate killing of innocent civilians you find this kind of de definition in the in the dictionary if it could be agreed that the deliberate killing of innocent civilians is a central element in most definitions of terrorism then in that event the worst terrorism of the cent last century should be the usa for bombings of hiroshima and nagasaki <laughs> where suffering of large number of innocent people has never been healed even after six decades just kill blacks of people in these two places so also the worst violators of 21st century as it began are the usa and great britain there's not much difference between george w bush and luxury tab taiba both believe in killing killing helps them killing keeps alive the tension in this region that is what they want that is their business so the usa has a business of encouraging killing killing everywhere it uh, gives them a market it gives them a market for supply of arms so also luxury to toba believe in killing it gives them a market so while both seek to wield power one of course with the superior in power of usa and the other of course trying to build up his own uh, other category of power so it has become the global war in this way as a terrorism becomes a permanent feature of these persons in other words the permanent feature of american policy is a global war it will never come to an end as long as the fear of terrorism is there they are happy as a result of this what is happening in the rest of the world is that freedom and liberty gets curtailed we are now gradually sliding into what is called a security society today as you must have seen as we walked in what happened to all of us everyone had to have a check up you could go security internal security so we are going into a security society security is more important not liberty your security and then you must have read in the paper what is called advanced passenger information system you get into a plane in london within 15 minutes your full history is sent to bombay or whichever the destination when you land there the police are there police know your full history you are going to dubai half a dozen times okay that is enough they could do anything they like for example what happened in uh, amsterdam you see you all know they saw some people people behaving in the, in the plane people behaving in a very suspicious way their appearance their dress their speaking language looking like arabs looking at watch frequently bearded muslims and uh, burqa clad women okay all these are suspicious suspicious character this kind of thing so security become more important and this is a kind of 
policing that goes on. And the, as a result of that, we have uh, all sorts of things that go on in this country, everywhere, because under security society, the police can do anything they like. Other day, you must have read the Dantap Hill. Somebody was found in a building which was supposed to have been neglected. Nobody was there. What happened was, the police suddenly found he was a Pakistani, they said. One doesn't know. They went and shot him, killed him. Nobody, no proof, nothing of the kind. So because the neighbor security, the society accepted. Society did not protest. Who was killed? Nobody knows. So the police again believe in this guy because that helps them. They, they don't have to prove a case. They can detain anyone, keep him inside the police station, days together, without a charge, without anything, in the name of investigation. In fact, the other day, I went to the minority commission. What happened was people are just being rounded up and taken to, taken to the police station. What is the law? If you're taken to the police station, if you're a witness, of course, your statement has to be recorded, and then you have to go home. If you're not a witness, you're a suspect, then your name should be there somewhere. Your name should be in the FIR, or they should have advanced information. But they just can't take you to the police station, say, you are a suspect, you don't know anything about me, but you are a suspect. You keep me, you torture me inside. You keep me for days together. No station diary entry, no report. And one fine day, you handcuff that man with another unknown person who is supposed to come from Pakistan. And they say, you are connected with these two together. This is a kind of system. So in the name of security today, police can do whatever they like. Anyone can be killed in an encounter, that's a no investigation. In the name of security, every movement of yours can be, can be tracked. Your bank accounts, for example, your transactions all come under the, under the check. In the name of security, see, the other day the rule has come. In Bombay City, you can't sell or buy property. You can't rent out your house. You want to rent out, you have to go and inform, inform uh, the police officer. Uh, so the police have to be informed. So liberty is becoming a casualty. You are literally going to be enslaved. Soon, if this kind is encouraged, ultimately, you slowly, slowly, your rights are being taken away. Your liberty is being taken away. You are enslaved. This is a kind of thing. And I tell you, this is not something new. When Tara was introduced, also it was introduced for the sake of security. Even the Supreme Court, though it's a draconian law, unjust law, after Manaka Gandhi's case, nobody could have upheld that kind of law. Yet the Supreme Court upheld that law. Again, in the name of internal security. In the name of security, that's the main consideration. They upheld FOTA law, again in the name of security. They upheld Armed Forces Special Powers Act, which has done havoc in northeastern state, Manipur and so on, those places. Yet we upheld the law in the name of security. All of principles of uh, the liberal society, justice, social, economic, everything, all those they have forgotten. This is a kind of approach. So this is, therefore, it is necessary, we must understand, this violence must come to an end. So what is the solution? Solution is not arms. Solution is not violence. Violence against what be from the people or from the state, no. What is required is that, why should there be so much violence in the society? Our approach should be, why there is this kind of terrorism? What is the reason for that? That is the thing the government must understand. Not arms, not kind of this kind of harsh law. I tell you, there is so much of injustice in the society. Go to any part of India, anywhere. So, so much of injustice. The rich and the powerful can get away with impunity. They can, nothing happens to them. America can invade any country, nothing happens to them internationally. Within India, the rich and powerful are not bothered. They don't go in for voting, but they get whatever they want. But the poor, what happens to the poor? The marginalized. Huge projects, for example. We have built huge projects. I, can, I got details of statistics if you want, I can give them. What happens to them? Narmada Dam is the simplest example. Came up, came up. What happened to the people who are affected? Large number of tribals, what happened to them? They had lost their land.